originally we were looking for a two bedroom. That did not work out. Can't even imagine like relaxing out here because it feels like you're just dangling in space. I almost feel like we couldn't have fit two desks because the bedroom was like really small. Also, we accidentally stole the key. I kept pushing to see higher one bedrooms, lots of space and natural light. Things kind of went downhill from here. I don't know if we should spend $5,300 a month on an apartment. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. My husband and I are making the move to New York City. We we're originally from Seattle, Washington, and we have kind of been traveling around all over the place for the last few years. We've both work remotely. We lived in Berlin, Germany for a while, and then we've been back in the States for a little over a year now. In that time, we've lived in Los Angeles, Boston, Seattle, New York, and then now New York again. And now we are planning to get an apartment and stay in New York City for the next year. So I am actually filming this at the end of our apartment search. So the apartment has already been secured, but I wanted to walk you through what the process was like, all of the different places that we saw, show you the tours, talk to you about the prices, the pros and cons, all of that. Because when we first started our apartment search in New York City, I was absolutely overwhelmed by how different apartment searching in New York is from anywhere else. So our budget was four grand and it was a little bit flexible. We could have gone maybe up to 4,500 a month, but ideal for us was where we were actually paying less than four grand a month and then plus utilities and whatever else, our like monthly housing cost came out to four grand. Originally, we were looking for a two bedroom. That did not work out. We quickly learned that in order to get the other things on our list and stay within our budget, we were going to have to go with a one bedroom. When you're apartment searching in New York, you just have to make sacrifices. I feel like you have to be okay with either sacrificing location, budget, or like space. You'll see a few different combinations of all of those things in this video. We had this sublet in South Harlem for the summer. We got here mid-June and we had a trip booked to go back to Seattle and that was gonna be August 25th or so through mid-September. So we were looking for an apartment that was either available to move in right before we left for Seattle or after we get back. And we were even considering extending our time in Seattle to October 1st because we were thinking like that way we could end up saving a little bit more on rent because we'll be staying with family in Seattle. And also sometimes it's easier to find apartments that like with the start date on the 1st rather than the 15th, which is when we're getting back to New York. The location, we were pretty flexible. As long as we liked the location when we visited the apartment, we weren't like, oh, it has to be in this one specific area. And we obviously don't have to consider a commute. So that made us a little bit more flexible. But the main places that we were looking at were the Upper West Side. We were also really considering Brooklyn Heights. And then we also looked at several in like the Borum Hill Cobble Hill area of Brooklyn. We preferred to stay in Manhattan, but again, you have to sacrifice something. <laughs> so we were like considering Brooklyn as well. We didn't want to be too far out from Manhattan. So that was one of our must-haves. Otherwise, natural light is a number one important thing. Updated kitchen. This is something that I really, really wanted. I haven't cooked that much since we've been like traveling around and stuff because we haven't had a kitchen where I really felt comfortable and we didn't have all the kitchen utensils and Airbnbs and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to like cooking more regularly and I just really wanted a kitchen that feels updated and bright and preferably white, you know, new appliances, that kind of stuff. Space for two desks. This is an absolute must have because like I said, we both work from home pet friendly. We don't currently have any pets, but we're really hoping that when we get back from our trip to Seattle sometime in the fall, we can get a little puppy so we didn't want to sign a lease somewhere where we couldn't you know have dogs washer dryer in the building at a minimum but i really 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 wanted it in unit like that is just so important to me it is just so annoying to have to go to your laundry <laughs> somewhere else if it was going to be like a paid washer dryer in the building then we would strongly prefer that it was like pay through an app or with your card rather than coin operated it had to have ac or be willing to install ac units because that's not something that we feel comfortable doing on our own on our nice to have list like i said washer dryer in unit two bedrooms would have been great a doorman or virtual doorman this is really nice because in an apartment if they can't get in the front door to deliver packages and sometimes they'll just leave them on the porch and then they can get stolen so having a doorman eliminates that problem and it's just all around a very luxurious experience and makes it feel like a little bit more homey because there's always someone there who you can like ask stuff also it's so like quintessentially new york walkable to church gym and trader joe's dishwasher in the kitchen this is again not standard in new york apartments So the first place that we toured was on the Upper West Side and immediately this like blew our minds. I don't know why I set up this tour, but first big con was that it was way over budget. 
but it was so beautiful. We were both in love with it immediately and seriously considered it because it had a doorman, lots of space and natural light. The layout was amazing and the kitchen was absolutely enormous and nice and updated and just like lots of room for cooking. Pet friendly, it was available October 1st, which was great because then we could save money on like half of September or actually all of September and October rent. It was also a really, really nice area on the Upper West Side and walkable to church. It was literally like three blocks away. So that was super cool. Had lots of storage space and a dishwasher. Cons, yes. <laughs> This was 4800 a month, so obviously way over budget, but it did not have a broker's fee. And this is something we kind of learned as we went through our process is originally we were only looking at no fee apartments, but actually you can get a better apartment for a overall cost that is less if you pay a broker's fee and like a lower monthly rent. In the end, we like started seeing places that did have broker's fees as well. And we just calculated it out and compared how much that would add to our monthly rent, basically so that we could compare the cost of fee and no fee apartments. Other cons, it did not have a washer and dryer in the unit, which was very sad, but it did have a washer and dryer in the basement of the apartment building. It was coin operated though, so. I don't like to get coins, okay? Next place we saw was also on the Upper West Side, but a little bit further north, almost into like the Manhattan Valley area. It was on 96th Street. This one was available mid-July, so it was definitely quite early for us. It was 45, 65 a month, so also over budget, but it didn't have a fee, so that was nice. Pros of this one were it was very clean and modern building. It had a doorman, it had a gym. But unfortunately we were not able to see the actual unit that was available. So we were viewing a comparable unit, but it was on a lower floor. And one thing that I always look for in apartments is like open the windows and just like listen to the noise. And this one, when I opened the window, you could immediately hear like, you know those huge industrial fans? Like if you stand outside a grocery store, you can just hear the like fan noise. It did have a, a pretty updated kitchen with a dishwasher. It did have central air, which was awesome, pet friendly, lots of storage and room for desks. And it was walkable to Trader Joe's and pretty close to church. Cons, no laundry in the unit. Coin op laundry room. It was over budget and available too early. And it also had a lot of extra fees for the amenities, which is something that I came to find out is quite common with these newer build buildings. So there was like a pet rent. There was an amenity fee, which was like $75 per person per month. So that adds up quite a bit to your monthly rent. And then there were other fees as well. Mm, so in the end, we were just like, mm, I don't know about that. Next, we saw one in Borum Hill in Brooklyn, which is a neighborhood that we really, really like. And it's kind of nice because it is over in Brooklyn, but it's not too deep into Brooklyn. So you can still take the, I think it's the C train and get into Manhattan relatively quickly. This one was a one bedroom. It was available immediately. So that was kind of not great, but it was right on our budget at $39.38 a month and there was no fee. Pros. It was a nice new build, beautiful building. The neighborhood was also pretty cute. Had a doorman, pets allowed. Washer dryer in unit and a dishwasher. Had a gym, had central air, like all those things that you generally find in new build buildings. But cons were, it was just like a little bit farther from church and from Manhattan than we would have liked. It was also pretty small, like we definitely could have fit, well, I don't know. I almost feel like we couldn't have fit two desks because the bedroom was like really small. It was available too soon. And again, there were a lot of like extra little charges for like pet rent and amenity fees and stuff like that. So it brought, it, brought the monthly total up over our budget. Next one we saw 
we looked and we actually applied and ended up getting approved, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So this one was in downtown Brooklyn. Again, it's just like one quick train over to Manhattan, but it is in Brooklyn. It was a one bed with a den and two bathrooms. So it was like a perfect size, definitely like plenty of room for us to have our own separate office spaces. Pets were allowed. They had an updated kitchen in there. It also had a balcony, which was really nice and tons of natural light. It was available August 1st, so like a little better. It was $38.75 a month. So under our budget, it did not have a broker's fee. It had a washer and dryer in the unit and it had a gym in the basement. It also had a dishwasher. It also had central air, but the problem was, and this is why we ended up not going with it in the end, even though we got approved. The area itself was a little bit weird. So downtown Brooklyn in general, I really like, but this was like on a, the edge of downtown Brooklyn and it was in this triangle where several different freeways converge. If you wanna walk anywhere, basically you have to cross like a major road. There weren't any coffee shops or grocery stores or anything like that within that little triangle. I think that's why the cost was a little bit lower because if we'd seen this apartment in Manhattan, like it would have been way over four grand. And that's why we ended up not going for it in the end. The next one we saw was in Hell's Kitchen, which I, I think I bought the listing set Upper West Side, but it was on 54th Street, so it was definitely Hell's Kitchen. It was a one bedroom. It was available September 12th, which was a pretty good date for us, and it did not have a fee, but the starting rent was $43.39, so already over budget. Some pros of this place, it had great space, definitely enough space for us to have two desks and not feel cramped had a lot of natural light. But again, with this one, we were not able to view the actual unit that was available. We viewed like a, a different unit with the same floor plan. So it's kind of hard to tell, you know, exactly what the light and like feel of the unit would have been. Pets allowed, dishwasher, central air, updated kitchen, all of that good stuff. So some cons, it was over budget. And again, this one had lots of extra amenities, fees and stuff. So it was like taking it even more over budget. It's also a super busy area of Midtown. Like, I don't know why, I probably would not have reached out to this one if I realized it was in Hell's Kitchen because that's just too much for me. Josh loved the area, but I was like, mm. I feel like I'm in Times Square right now. This one actually also did not have a washer and dryer in the unit, but it did have a coin operated washer dryer room on it was an upper floor. Also, we accidentally stole the key. This was a self-guided tour and Josh had the key in his hand when we went up to the desk to get my ID because they like take your ID before you go up to view the unit. The security guard just handed me my ID and then we left. And we were like a 15 minute walk away by the time that we realized that Josh still had the key to the apartment in his pocket. So that was kind of funny. We were like rushing back because I was like already super overwhelmed by the area. And so I was like beelining it out of there. And then he realized that he had the key and we had to turn around and walk right back the way we came and then right back again. And I was just like, I hate it here. The next one we saw was over in Brooklyn Heights. It was a one bedroom unit and it was 3,700 a month, had a 10% broker's fee and they had this policy where you had to move in within the next 15 days after submitting an application. So when we were viewing it, that meant that the latest we could move in was August 1st. And we really, really liked this unit. Let's go through the pros first. It was under budget. It was a nice little space. It had recently been painted and updated and the kitchen was updated as well. It had a doorman and the building itself was clean and nice and just seemed like a lovely place to live. They did not charge pet rent and they did allow pets. It was right next to the subway station that would take us into Manhattan to get to church and it was only a 30 minute train ride. A few cons, however. <laughs> the 10% broker's fee, just we don't love spending money for no reason. It was available too early. We'd have to double up on August rent. Did not have a washer and dryer in unit or a dishwasher. The kitchen itself was like very, very tiny. However, it did have a washer and dryer room in the basement and it was app or card operated. So no need to get coins. It didn't come with air con. So we would have had to buy our own AC units and then the super would install them for us. And I don't know how much an AC unit costs, but you know, that adds to the move in fees. Again, there was possibly like a loud fan noise outside. I actually did not test this apartment. I didn't open any of the windows, which I should have, but I know like one of the windows 
the one in the bedroom looked out on the, like a rooftop and it had like these two industrial fans there. So I feel like it would have had that noise. There was no Trader Joe's or Whole Foods within walking distance. And it was also just like a little bit farther from church than we would have liked. We did actually end up applying for this apartment, but then after they accepted our application, we decided not to do that because of the start date. Number seven that we saw was over in Borum Hill again, and this was a brand spanking new building. Like it wasn't, they weren't even done with construction. <laughs> It was crazy. We had to like sign a construction waiver that if we like fell down the elevator shaft or something, it wasn't our fault. So we saw a bunch of different units and they were like varying degrees of over budget. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There was, I think one one bedroom and then one studio that were on or under a budget, but the rest were over a budget. They were all available around our preferred August, like end of August move-in date and no fee. We first saw a one bedroom that was four grand. So right on budget, it was on the third floor. It was okay. Like it had everything we were looking for basically, but we didn't really love the views. And this building was super tall. So we were hoping to see one of the higher up units, although they do like get more expensive as they go up. As we kept viewing these units, I was like getting super excited. I was like, this place is just lovely. So <laughs> I kept kind of like pushing to see more and more units. We also saw this amazing studio on like the, I think it was the 17th floor and Truly a studio is too small for us. So like we weren't seriously considering it, but the views from this place were insane. When we went out on like the little balcony, I was like scared. It was so high up. And I was like, I can't even imagine like relaxing out here because it feels like you're just dangling in space. But beautiful views. So that was really nice. And it had a little um, den area as well where we could have put a desk, but then, it was just like so, so, so small. So I kept pushing to see higher one bedrooms and eventually we did end up seeing the one bedroom. It was on the ninth floor and I I fell in love with this unit. I mean, we were there at golden hour and I mean, look at the light in this place. It's just dreamy. I loved it so much and it had everything we were looking for, central air, like obviously it was brand new. It had tons of natural light, pets allowed, gym in the building, beautiful neighborhood, all of that. But the ninth floor one bedroom was $4,500 a month. So $500 over budget. There were not a lot of extra added fees at this building actually, which is really nice, but it's, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, it was pretty far from church. And additionally, also right next to the Barclays Center, which if you don't know, is like this huge concert venue in New York. And we actually happened to be viewing the unit the night of the Drake concert. So it was bananas. And I was like, I can't imagine myself just like walking the dog in the evening and like being suddenly surrounded by like this mass of crazy drunk people going to a concert. Regardless, I was so in love with this unit that I would like really, really wanted to apply. I had pretty much convinced Josh, but then he was like really unsure about how far it was from church in Manhattan because we're here for a year. We're here for the experience. We, we really love this church that we found. We want to be close to the people and the experiences that we're here for. I can't remember, honestly, I don't know if he talked me out of it or it was that plus the combination of just like how much per month this is going to be that really got to me. And I was like, okay, fine. So I completely ghosted the poor broker because I was just like so sad that we were not gonna live in that apartment that I just like couldn't even tell her. downhill from here. So at this point, I was starting to get like really fed up with the apartment search because we had seen eight apartments and I was just like, there's no way that we're ever gonna find a place that feels like home to me that is within our budget. Like maybe that just doesn't exist in New York City. So I was like, okay, let's just try looking at some places that are over our budget. Maybe we just need to adapt our budget higher and maybe I just need to be okay with that. And so I went online and I looked at some places and I was booking a tour at this place called the Buchanan in Midtown East. We actually ended up seeing several units there. Every single last one of them would have been absolutely perfect for us. They were available on our timeline towards the end of August and there was no fee. So all good things. The one that we saw though that I was just absolutely obsessed with was 40 or sorry, no. 
53.25 per month gross, but they had like a one month free or whatever. So the net rent, if you like did the math and spread it out over 12 months was 48.81 a month. But also the um, real estate agent who showed us the unit said that they did like give us a special deal and drop the gross rent to 52.80. So then the net rent was 48.40 a month. So slightly less if we moved in before the end of August, which is kind of what we want to do anyways. So yeah, I mean, pros were just like, everything was perfect. Everything was stunning. Everything was immaculate. I could absolutely see myself living in any of these different units. The reason I liked 14G the best was because it had like a little bit more of an open layout for the kitchen. And because they'd remodeled the kitchen and like removed this wall, they were able to fit in a full size dishwasher. So one thing that was nice about all of the Buchanan's units was that they did have dishwashers, but they were like these small, you, most people have probably never seen these, they're crazy. They're like one quarter size dishwashers, I don't know. They're really cute, but yeah, they all had those. So like it's something, um, but the, the last one, 14G, had a full size dishwasher, one and a half bath, just like plenty of space. Also, the amenities in this building were amazing. They had literally had a pet spa. They had a storage unit. The gym was like Equinox level. Josh was like freaking out because they had like all these squat racks and like whatever else he wants. There were two entrances, one on East 48th Street and one on 47th or maybe 49th. I can't remember which direction I went. Both had doormen. Yeah, just like all around. It was so luxurious and amazing. They even offered you like a 10% discount at the restaurant right next door, which is crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I was like immediately, we have to live here. This is where I was meant to have my New York experience. This is who I am. And I was really pushing for it. And Josh, <laughs> sweet. Sweet Josh was like, I don't know if we should spend $5,300 a month on an apartment. And I was like, but it's perfect, I love it. And he was like, that's a lot of money. We could be saving <laughs> and investing. And I was like, ugh. So we kind of went back and forth about it for a while. And then eventually I had like a full on mental breakdown about how I was never gonna get what I want out of an apartment and cried for like half a day and then decided I was moving back to Seattle. <laughs> that's how viewing the Buchanan went. I did rally. I decided that I would go see the last two apartments that I had scheduled viewings at. The first one was in Midtown East. It was a one bedroom or flex two bedroom, which means that it was a pretty large one bedroom, which um, like if I was moving in with a roommate, I could put in um, an extra wall and like flex into a two bedroom, which meant that there was plenty of space for us to have two work setups and just like, a good amount of space to move around. It was also right on budget at $39.95 a month and they were pretty flexible on the move-in date but were like aiming for August 15th, so it was okay. However, it did have a 15% broker's fee and I didn't realize that until after I'd viewed the unit, so that was not a deal. Some pros of this place were it was really nicely remodeled. I loved the finishes and the color of everything. The kitchen and the bathroom was super cute. I actually think this one was a two bath, so that was nice. It had plenty of space, like I said. It had a dishwasher and a washer and dryer and central air, and then they did allow pets. And actually, the broker showed up with her little dachshund in her purse, which was the cutest thing ever. I was just absolutely obsessed with her. Her name was Penny, and she was penny colored. Some cons of this place, however, I I showed up and there were two other people at the viewing which immediately kind of set the tone for how the process with this place felt like it was going to be very competitive and I just don't love that. Didn't have like a ton of, it didn't really get any direct sunlight because it was facing towards the garden, not the street. There were like a lot of trees around. So it was nice because when you look out the window, it was like greenery and stuff, but also you didn't really get any direct sunlight. Also this one had the fan problem. Like when I opened the one of the windows, you could hear the industrial fans from these like big buildings that were next to it. And I just don't want to sleep with that noise at night. Like I want to be able to open my window and like not hear this incessant Fan. After the viewing, the broker sent an email basically explaining the application process and the first thing that you were supposed to do before even submitting the application was send an email to the management company and basically list your offer for the monthly rent. If you're willing to pay more than that, you can go ahead and it said put your best and highest offer. I didn't like that. So we did not end up applying for that part. <laughs>
Okay, the next one we saw was really cute. It was on the Upper West Side, 3,700 a month. So nice, under budget, one bedroom. It's available August 25th, which was perfect timing for us, but it did have a 15% broker's fee, which is quite high. <laughs> I mean, it's normal for New York, but it's just a lot of money. So some pros, it had dual exposure windows in the bedroom, so two different directions. The view is like looking out on this like beautiful church and this building next door, which is covered in ivy, which was awesome. The area itself was absolutely lovely and it's on this part of the Upper West Side that's very calm and like residential feeling, but it's also like close to, we can walk to Trader Joe's and like there were some other shops and stuff nearby. It's also sandwiched between Central Park and then Riverside Park to the west, so lots of running options and walking options. It was pretty accessible to church. We could actually walk to church from there. It had an updated kitchen and bathroom, pet friendly. Some cons though. It had a washer dryer combo, which is obviously better than no washer and dryer at all, but I just heard that like washer dryer combos don't work super well. I don't know like how helpful that would be, like especially with doing bedding and stuff like that. It's also quite small. I think we could fit two desks, one in the bedroom and one in the living room, but it would be tight. It didn't have a doorman. It had a high broker's fee and it also did not have central air. However, it did come with two AC units, one in the living room and one in the bedroom. decided to go see that last apartment because it actually ended up being absolutely perfect for us and pretty much checking all of our boxes. So yeah, we move into our new apartment in one week and then after that we are literally flying back to Seattle the next day. So we're just gonna drop all our stuff in the new place, fly back to Seattle and spend three weeks there and then when we come back to New York mid-September we'll like unpack and get everything set up and settle into the new place but I'm so excited. Despite all of the emotions that this process has entailed, it really has been such an amazing experience. Apartment searching in New York City is like nowhere else. And now I can always say that we've done it. We did it successfully. I'm just really looking forward to moving into our new place and getting all settled. It's been so long since we've had an apartment that's actually ours. Really looking forward to making a place to feel like home again and potentially getting a dog when we get back from Seattle and just experiencing fall in the city and all that that has to offer. So if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. I'm really looking forward to sharing just some of the fun stuff that's coming up in our life. I feel like this next season is full of all kinds of exciting things that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.